Of the nine full trading days we've had in 2020, the Dow's hit a new all-time intraday high on four of those sessions. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq on six of them. Joining us right now to talk more about where we go from here is Noah Blackstein. He is vice president and senior portfolio manager at Dynamic Funds. His fund, by the way, has returned more than 300 percent just over the last decade. And Noah, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the Dynamic Fund was up by 41 percent last year, and that handily beats the market's performance. Yeah, U.S. dollars. Well, it was a good, obviously a good year. How'd you do it? Why? I mean, the market was so strong as it was. What did you have that others didn't in their Well, you know, we just, we run a constant, highly concentrated uh, portfolios of growth stocks which were good in the first half of the year. Obviously, I think that when August rolled around and then we had the, uh, we had the yield curve steep and we had a fourth quarter rally, which was in some of the more beaten down names, but that's okay. They were left for uh, dead in, terms, in August. And so they caught up in terms of uh, price, which, which was good to see. You can't have the market led by a few stocks for sure. Uh, but what I would say, I think Target's a good example. You know, Target doubled last year almost. Um, but I think we're at a point, even like with Target or with some of the semiconductor names, where you have these stocks that went up 100% last year. You know, in the case of the semiconductors, their revenues and earnings were down double digits last year. Mm -hmm. So it was the anticipation of a recovery. It was the anticipation of a better economy, probably a China trade deal. I think a lot of these companies are now going to have to deliver on their stock price moves. And so, you know, we're in a period now where the earnings have to catch up to what the stocks have started to discount. So you think a performance like last year can't be, per, uh, be repeated this year? By me or by the market? Both. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't guarantee those types of returns, that's for sure. I, I think, you know, the P.E. has gone back up, obviously. We were at very depressed levels in December of, of 18. You know, we're up until the 24th of December, we're talking about Great Depression analogies in 18. So we obviously had a recovery, and now it's the earnings. So I, I don't see a major pullback. I think the, the cause of most major pullbacks in my career has been a Fed mistake, and I think they're, they're not an issue for they're 2020. Yeah, totally. Um, so I think, you know, and I think that the trade war is at least cooled off. It's not escalating. It's sort of status quo from here. We'll see what happens. But so, I, you know, I don't see a tremendous number of issues. I think we can focus on fundamentals. And the earnings for some of these companies have to catch up to the stock prices. In terms of looking at the high growth uh, stocks, what, what, what sectors do you like? What stocks do you like? Yeah, I think in, in healthcare and in technology, I think the software names had a big run up until the spring and then have gone sideways since. Uh, I think a lot of those names, whether you're looking at uh, the move to cloud or the digital transformation, uh, that's continuing onward. And they have uh, sort of very high growth rates here. I also think you know, 5G is a reality and it's, it's uh, rolling out and I think it's going to unleash a whole host uh, of new applications as well. So I, I think you can focus in on that. I think you know, JP Morgan, you see the sort of post JP Morgan sell off in the biotech and healthcare names for the JP Morgan conference mm -hmm. out in San Francisco. Uh, you know, I, I think we saw a tremendous amount of M&A last year and I think that's going to continue. You, you made some comments in your notes about how we might be on the verge of a lot of big breakthroughs when it comes to biotech. Well, that's, that's pretty exciting. We've thought that in the past, but why is this time different? Well, I think we're the early data on, um, on you know, Cas9 and CRISPR technology and perhaps actually genetics. Re repairing genetics, yeah. you know, where you have drugs now for cystic fibrosis, but maybe you could repair the genetics. Uh, uh, the DNA. That's exciting, but I think more exciting has been all the M&A in oncology really is about combination therapies in, in oncology and, and what the opportunity is for combining uh, oncology medicines in terms of progression-free survival and, and, and life. And so I think there's a lot of things going on in healthcare. Uh, last year, I think, you know, when the sector got hammered with Elizabeth Warren when she was in the lead, uh, it obviously rallied back as she uh, fell in the polls. As we moved to the election, though, you know, if, if she drops out, where do her votes go? And does it go to Sanders? And does that make sentiment trading on health care a little more difficult? I think you need to, you need to watch that in, as we get closer to the election. I mean, sure. it's not just Sanders and, and Warren who have raised questions about this. The Trump administration has done its own sort of move to right. try and keep drug prices at least under control. For sure. Uh, but they've also been uh, very good in terms of approvals of new drugs, mm -hmm. uh, especially in, 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 I think the approval process at the FDA has, has gotten uh, um, much more patient friendly. You think that that continues even with Scott Gottlieb leaving the position at the FDA because I think he had a, a large part of, of why that approval process got better. Um, I, I have no reason to think it won't, but yeah. we'll, we'll have to see if it. I don't think it'll change, but we, we have to see.